Hello. Hello. Welcome to Monday Night Live. It's Yvonne here from Women's Fitness Adventures. Thank you for joining me. I am uh, literally fresh off a hike, changed my shirt, uh, but have not caught my breath this afternoon to change from hiking this morning. So uh, that's okay. It's all about being in the moment. Uh, so we are live for Monday night. I've switched it up again to five o'clock. So you may, five o'clock Brisbane time on the east coast of Australia. So you may or may not be catching me live. Um, but I wanted to check in and share with you uh, some insights from our weekend workshop that we had in Victoria, which was really lovely. So let me just uh, pop a little welcome here down the bottom. So if you are watching live, um, let me know where you're watching from and say hello. I cannot see you. Uh, I know there's quite a few people watching. Uh, I know that also people stalk. Uh, so if you're stalking, come on, come clean uh, and say hello. Uh, there's, I can't see you. All I know is your name uh, and it's nice. Uh, so hello, Simone. Uh, hello, Karen. And hello, Chrissy. Lovely to see you all here. So I know there's a few others of you watching. Uh, so it would be nice if you could uh, identify. So there's some things I want to talk about tonight. Um, our, and hi, Virginia as well. Our workshop uh, that we had in Victoria on the weekend was amazing. We uh, we it, it's a hiking skills workshop it was the first one that we had done and hi Meg and hi Alison and we were pretty excited we had some amazing women uh, with us for the weekend we were in country Victoria and we covered uh, gear and equipment we covered skills on the trail we covered functional fitness and we covered some great conversation and social occasions as well uh, so hello Leanne hello Jennifer hello Sonia from Brisbane lovely to have you here as well uh, and Cherie from Ninji. So nice to have everyone from all over the country here. Um, so on the weekend, yes, we had this, this terrific time. We flew down from Brisbane and it was a little bit bumpy uh, as we were coming into land. And what had happened was a massive storm had come through Victoria and caused lots of localised flooding and even stomping to get the, the hire car uh, with my boots on the water was about that thick. So as we were driving out towards where we held it up in Gisborne, about 45 minutes from Brisbane, uh, Melbourne itself, uh, we were on made roads, but they were quite uh, heavily flooded. So, uh, but as luck would have it, or, or good fortune or good planning, the skies turned to blue, uh, the, all the spring flowers were starting to come out and the weather held that way for the entire weekend, which was such a delight. Uh, it wasn't so delightful to wake up on Sunday morning to ice on the windscreen. It had got down to two degrees. So that's something new uh, that I hadn't experienced before. But the other new thing that happened, we often, um, you know, it gets joked about for Australia and uh, international people ask this all the time is do kangaroos hop down your street? And lo and behold, we were driving along and the kangaroo is jumping down the street. And so I have a video of it and I'll put that. I just need to edit the little bit of words that we have at the beginning. But we're driving down the street of Gisborne and there is a kangaroo bouncing along the street. So for those of you who know me, you'll know my son is over in um, America on a student exchange at the moment at university. And uh, I sent the video to him and he said, my American friends aren't going to believe this. And I said, look, I couldn't actually quite believe it either. So it was pretty fun and pretty exciting to see that happen. Um, and hello, Teresa, and hello, Kay. Lovely to have you here as well. Uh, so there were some great insights from the weekend, and I know a couple of ladies who are, uh, or a couple of people watching were there on the weekend, and if you want to add anything, please do. And if you have any questions, please add them um, in here as well or any comments you'd like to make because the conversation is only as rich as you make it uh, and, you know, all com comments and questions are really valid and really important. And that's probably one of the the insights that came out of the weekend there's you know if I delve a little bit more but this is my top line there's five key insights from our hiking um, skills workshop on the weekend and aside from the skills that we delivered and aside from you know the 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 knowledge of gear and equipment which was great because it was so interactive we could put on packs we could you know, make sure that the packs were the right fit. We all learnt how to look at each other and know if a pack is a right fit or not, which really makes such a difference to um, your hiking and the hiking skills because if an unbalanced or imbalanced backpack can really throw you out, especially if it's a, um, a steep hill or if it's, you know, uneven terrain. Uh, so that was, was something that we, it wasn't an insight, but 
um, that was, you know, really well received and really, um, I guess, um, uh, you don't know. So one of the insights is you don't know what you don't know. So, you know, if we if this is new to us, um, then we don't know what we don't know. We don't know the questions to ask. We don't know what to look for. And it's okay to ask those questions. So when it's pointed out, that's actually learning. And somewhere along the way we get um, this assumption that we have to know everything before we start something. And it's really refreshing and it's really um, uh, nice to see, um, you know, I don't know everything, but to see us all coming together and um, being open to learning new things, being open to asking the questions if we don't understand something, that we don't have to be experts before we give something a go and knowing that there's that uh, community and other women like us around that will um, give the same support. Um, so it was that you don't know what you don't know. And it, it resulted in some backpacks being taken back to the store because they weren't um, the correct fitting backpacks, which great is great because it saves hundreds of dollars. If you choose the wrong backpack uh, and then go on a hike with it, you can't take it back. Uh, sure, you could sell it on, but it's besides the the money you've invested on the backpack, it's all the, also the time that you've invested in yourself to go out on that trail. And a great backpack along with great boots and, of course, a great raincoat makes such a difference to the success of your hike to what you can put in there from the right fit to the right size to the way it fits on your body or doesn't uh, to the way it, how far it sits up on your head. All of those things we learned and it's okay to not know. So we don't know what we don't know and that's okay. And that's my first insight from the weekend. The second insight was that um, we went around the room and introduced ourselves and some of the, the ladies in the room knew each other and some didn't and um, we all introduced ourselves and the hardest part is actually showing up uh, showing up to a room for some a room of strangers uh, is actually harder than doing any any hike um, that vulnerability of putting ourselves out there and um, that it's okay to share your story that your story will resonate with some if not many people and it's only through sharing our stories that we can realize that we are all very similar in some ways and I share this a lot is that our stories might be similar the characters might be a little bit different um, but our stories are similar and it's only when we share a little or a lot that we realize that we're not the only ones uh, that have the same fears and hopes and anxieties and worries or troubles um, and that we can lean in and learn a lot uh, from other people's stories and there's always someone who would like to um, help you there so that's insight number two let me just check here hello Margaret from Cairns looking forward to being in Victoria on the weekend of course you've got the Great Ocean Road hike coming up which is so lovely and Teresa says okay I would like to know if you wear a backpack when you start training and how heavy would you start with ah great question so that was something um that's something we do cover, and Teresa, I'm pretty sure you remember that we cover inside our membership. And um, a backpack, if you are going on any sort of walk, even if it's a comedy, you, know, you might have water in your um, hand, but you could put water, the water bottle, and you know a hat or sunscreen or something in your pack. So you're carrying a pack there. Uh, so it depends where you're going. It depends what you're doing. It um, depends. Uh, you know what you need how long you're out for as well and we always uh, if you are on one of our multi-day adventures we have uh, training plans that go with that so we build up so you have you, you can't go from zero to you know 10 kilos in one go uh, and train for a long time because you will end up fatiguing your body and when you fatigue your body the risk of injury is much higher um, our couch to mountain program which is coming almost to its its peak um, started off with literally um, no backpack just walking and we've slowly built up uh, over six months to um, uh, it'll be around seven kilos uh, our when we do a full hike of up to you know 14 to 17 kilos we go through a cycle and there's peak training period and then there's uh, dropping down as well. So, Teresa, I'm pretty sure inside the membership there's a masterclass on that and if you would also uh, tag us in there, we can point you to the right direction, tag us inside the member group. Um, 
and and I hope that's answered your question to some extent. It's it's quite a long uh, detail. Um, and uh, hello, Helen from Mary Valley. Uh, so the first insight was um, that uh, we don't know what we don't know, uh, and it's okay to ask questions. It's okay not to know. Our second question was uh, that it's okay to share. Uh, that someone will resonate with your story. You are unknowingly inspiring. Someone will get something from your story. You will inspire. You will, someone will learn. Someone may take action. You may never know, um, but it's okay to share and it's okay to learn from others as well. Um, that the third insight is that it's okay. Anywhere is okay to start. It's simply starting. And if that starting is showing up, and that is all that you do, then that is fantastic because somewhere inside there is a desire to do something else. And it may start slow and it may get bigger or it may just start slow and, and you know, simmer along for a little while and then it'll figure out what it wants to do. But if we stand still, if we don't make any decisions, then we're not going anywhere. Silence is consent. If you agree or disagree with anything, that's fantastic. If you don't have any comment at all or if you don't make any decision and someone makes it for you then you're agreeing to that decision so it, it anywhere is okay to start um, even if it starts in the head and the idea the concept starts brewing in there and then it takes a while to take action for whatever you choose to do and it doesn't necessarily relate to hiking or adventures or belonging or being part of a community anywhere is okay to start simply start you can change your mind um, but until you, you start, nothing can actually change. And no one, we were having this conversation today, no one can do anything for you if you want change that has to come from within. Uh, so that was an insight and it was so delightful on the weekend that all of our ladies who, um, all of our, our participants who showed up to the workshop were really keen uh, for change and really keen to learn and grow and, uh, you know, move forward in their journey of what they wanted. Um that so that was number three um that number four is that when institutions are taken away it's how do you make friends so when we take away the institutions of school or kids at school or work or you know volunteering or retirement how do we make new friends and how do we make new friends without trying a hundred million different things how do we find those people that we want to develop longer friendships with that have the same interests and often in life we go through and we have to meet a lot of people and and our paths of of good friends with shared memories from a long time will always be there but they may the friendships may go in different ways and our interests or their interests may change so how do you make new friends and and Everyone who came to the workshop on the weekend, and I see this inside our community all the time as well, um, is really keen for new friendships. And, and of the ladies in the room, there were 15 of us in total. No one actually knew each other or too vaguely knew each other um, before they joined. And I would say that's true of 99% of our membership is that nobody knew uh, before they joined anyone else before they joined and that's an amazing thing and as I said as the start at the start the hardest thing is showing up so that's number um, four and then the fifth one insight from the weekend so if I just quickly recap number one was um, you don't know what you don't know uh, number two is that it's okay to share or not someone will resonate with your story or be inspired or take action or take heart or courage from your story um, that anywhere is okay to start. It's simply starting. And uh, when institutions are taken away, how do you make friends? And we learned that by showing up, you make friends. Um, and courage is contagious is the fifth one. So th this is a really interesting one because we may look at something and on our own, think that I could never do that, I would never try that, that's beyond me, that is um, something I would never do and that could be anything and then you get with a like-minded, I'll say, group of women in this instance and the collective courage is contagious because we 
taught the skills because we created an environment that was open to um, being comfortable in asking questions, being comfortable in learning new things, in sharing each other's expertise, and everyone had some amazing expertise to share, um, that collectively gave everybody courage to try it, that, gosh, I'm not the only one trying this new technique walking downhill. I didn't know this technique existed for downhill or uphill. I'm not the only one doing that, uh, learning that for the first time. If she can do it then and or she can try it, then I'm going to give it a try too. And it's amazing what um, when we try something new and have that courage and trust and support of those around us, how much that does to boost our confidence as well. And that makes my heart sing. Um, and I know that a couple of you uh, who are watching tonight and those who you, who haven't identified themselves, if you were there on the weekend, uh, it would be great to get uh, your thoughts uh, on that one in particular as well. I'm just going to jump across to your question, Teresa. It says, I had always had the Great Ocean Road Hike on my bucket list for many years and would like to know what I do to work, work, work towards that hike. Um, great question. So if uh, you're in the membership, Teresa. There is a masterclass, I'm pretty sure, on how to prepare for a multi-day hike. Uh, so you could jump on there. Masterclasses are all part of your membership in the member portal and have a look at that one. That's a great place to start. Uh, also, if you choose to do the Great Ocean Road Hike with us, we give you a training plan. So it prepares you on how to uh, get involved with that. Um, and there are also our functional fitness classes online or live stream and you can hop on the which which give you the strength cardio and endurance for those adventures and also any of the online walk and talks that we do and jump on there and ask away with the question because many of our uh, other ladies who are on those walk and talks have been there and can give you some tips as well so I hope that that has helped um so all of those five insights can be translated across anything in life. It's not necessarily hiking. And we were saying that on the weekend that, you know, we all have the peaks and troughs of, of um, the trail, but it is a lot like life. And, you know, there's also some false peaks and false summits that we're in life going along thinking that, you know, we're just about to get cruisy and something comes our way and we have a little bit of a setback, a false peak or a false summit. And then we continue on our way to the summit as well. And what glory awaits us at the top. Uh, and then we might aim to stay on that plateau or that peak uh, for as long as we can and enjoy uh, the fruits of our hard work and the fruits of our labour. Um, so with that in mind, you know, that it's okay, anywhere is okay to start, simply start, that you don't know, that's number two, you don't know what you don't know and being open to asking questions, putting, uh, being vulnerable to, I'm always asking questions, um, People must think that I asked too many questions like we were in Gisborne. How did New Gisborne get its name was one of the questions I asked the guy at the hall. Um, that when the institutions are taken away, how do you make new friends? And, and, you know, one of the reasons I started Women's Fitness Adventures is I thought there must be more, more women like me who wanted to do some stuff, who didn't want to be the expert. All of these insights from the weekend are all the key reasons that I started in the first place. Um, Lee Ann says... The training programs are a great help to prepare for your trip. They are, absolutely. Following them is even better, which I know that you do, Leanne. Um, uh, it's okay to share or not, um, but, you know, we are all unknowingly inspirational, unknowingly inspiring. Someone somewhere in the course of your life that you may never, ever meet, never, ever know, uh, or beyond your life will be inspired by some small or large actions that you have done. It may be someone you meet on a plane or someone you, you know, see in a magazine or someone you see in, in the street. Um, but some sm small or large action by one person will have an impact on you. And hello, Miss Sandy from Toowoomba. Um, and that courage is contagious. Find those people that lift you up. Find those people that support you, that encourage you. And that will give you the courage from deep down in here to know that I might feel a little bit uncomfortable because I've never done this before, but I'm not uncomfortable because I'm unsafe. And uh, that feedback came through loud and clear 
uh, on the weekend as well. So um, they're my insights from our workshop weekend. Uh, we did have a bird fly into our car, Jane and I, Jane, one of our leaders, and neither of us like birds. So that was a little bit tense. We weren't in the car at the time, but the bird seemed to not want to get out of the car. Both doors were open. Uh, so that was a little bit tense. Um, but it was beautiful. It was two degrees overnight, but such a beautiful, beautiful weekend. The sun shone, you know, the timetable went to plan. Uh, it was really fabulous. And our social dinner on the Saturday night was also pretty amazing. Um yeah, it is so true, Sue, absolutely, and, and you were part of our Couch to Mountain program, uh, our inaugural one, and know what all of those elements do when they come together. Um, I want to share we have a couple of adventures, most of our adventures for uh, all of our adventures for this year and the early part of next year have sold out, but we have a few left. Um, oh, thank you, Meg. Great overview of the Victorian weekend, Yvonne, and Meg was a big part of that weekend, so it was lovely to have her there. Um, we have a couple of adventures. We're heading off to New Zealand. Um, <laughs> Yvonne and Jane should be zookeepers. Bird, zookeepers, birds, mice, kangaroos, Debbie. I will put the video up for everybody. Uh, maybe I won't get to it tonight. Um, of the kangaroo jumping down the street. It's just amazing, quite amazing. Um, and, Debbie, I am looking forward to you being on our New Zealand adventure because we, I miss my singing, buddy. I can sing a couple of lines, but I can't. I need you to bounce off so we can create the song for every moment, song for every occasion, every step. Um, and that's something that you will appreciate if you are on an adventure where Debbie and I happen to be on there. Um, so we have a couple of adventures with a few spots left. We have... Um, we have the New Zealand Southern Lakes. It's our third time to that. That's at the end of March. Beautiful time of year in New Zealand. The autumn leaves, uh, hiking um, through Wanaka, around the Christchurch area, up to Aspiring Hut, uh, Rob Roy Glacier. We, we hike to the base of and view it there. There's some stand-up paddleboarding options in Wanaka as well. Just beautiful time of year to be in New Zealand. Uh, so there's about five or six spots left on that one. Just amazing, amazing adventure. It's day pack hiking only. One night we hike out to the hut. Um, but the hut is a heated hut. We sleep on beds. We just need to put a sleeping bag in our pack. Um, we have uh, two left on our Painter's Way hike in Germany in May. It's the first time we've, we're doing the Painter's Way, 120 kilometres. Uh, we stay in some hotels each night our luggage has moved along for us uh pretty special that one i'm very excited about that it's called the painter's way because the romantics painters use that scenery for inspiration it's for anyone with um, a moderate level of fitness so if you're just starting out well not just starting out if you're starting out uh, it's in May, so there's plenty of time for training. Uh, it means that the trail is not technically difficult. It means that each day um, you just, you not just, I hate that word, you need to back up um, day after day. So uh, that's endurance. So what are we now? October to May. There's plenty of time if that one's of interest to you. Our training programs for, for uh, the European adventures are going out uh, within the next couple of weeks. Uh, so there's no time like now to get started. So two spots left on the Painter's Way. And then our other one, which we only released over the weekend to uh, the expression of interest, and there's only now three spots left, which we've just made live on the website for June next year, is the Great Ocean Road Hike, uh, which I'll be taking. That is in June next year. So exhilarating time of year for that one back where it all started with Women's Fitness Adventures in 2014. And that one is a moderate level of fitness too because it is 104 kilometres over the um, seven days or six days of hiking. Uh, and, again, the training plan comes with that. So, uh, you know, if that one's of interest to you, that's nine months away and that's one that um, – you could jump right into. If you aren't a member, then maybe have a think about that. Uh, you can join uh, right now if you choose uh, at, at joinmembership.com. Uh, Cherie says that she will look after the bird for us. Uh, thank you because, uh, yeah, we are. I, I, I did not have a great childhood with birds. I grew up in Melbourne and when we would go to um, the city and the school holidays and the pigeons were all there, my mother had the phobia of birds and I 
she transferred it to me and and my kids I've transferred it to as well, which is not a great thing. Uh, I like them. I just don't like them close to me. I love the sound of kookaburras though. Uh, So that's about it from me uh, for tonight. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed the insights. It's like that on everywhere we go that, um, you know, I think I was most blown away on the weekend by how from the moment we all got there um, at, you know, quarter to nine on the Saturday morning, it was that instant connection and that instant support and no judgment in any way at all um, of each and every female there, who, woman there who had come from a, a different environment who had so much individually to give and collectively uh, to share. So um, I just find that's all part of our community. Anyway, that's it from me. If you're a member, you have probably just received the newsletter. Um So a couple of date claimers in there for the Christmas parties as well and online and in person. Um, Otherwise, I will catch you next week at 5 o'clock for Monday Night Live. Thanks for listening and talk to you soon. Bye.